doing a little tech check for tomorrow's meetup. We'll uh, be, but be here tomorrow night at six o'clock talking about, uh, David will be giving his presentation, uh, Leadership Guides for the Reluctant Leader. So right now we're just kind of doing a, a quick AMA. So if anybody wants to jump on and ask any questions, go ahead. Um, I think we're also gonna talk a little bit about some of uh, David's video, audio video setup. So David, do you ready to start? Yeah. Well, it's uh, I'm looking forward to tomorrow night. Uh, it's going to be really awesome. And just to make sure, tomorrow is five thirty ish, and then six o'clock is the presentation. That's correct. Thank you. All right. Cool. Um, so you should see um, if there is anyone that joins on the stream. Uh, up in the top left corner, I think that's where it says live, and it shows you how long you've been on air uh, i see that there should be a counter for mm -hmm. anybody who happens to join not so, yet but uh hopefully soon we'll see yeah so that's a cool feature um uh, when i've been streaming with uh stream yard uh i will stream simultaneously to twitch youtube and facebook and um it the counter is accurate. I mean, it uh, lets me know how many people total are connected to each of those platforms. And the chat along the left or right-hand side is, uh, you know, works for across all the platforms. So if someone posts a question or a comment, it, it shows up in that feed uh, regardless where they're, where they posted it. And then if I respond in that feed, it, it goes out to everyone. So do you get to see the comments as well, David, as a, as a guest? Um, yeah. So right now I have the, the private chat open. And so now, yeah, I'm seeing, um, a couple of comments coming in from Twitch. Yeah. So that's, that's cat. One of our organizers, <laughs> apparently so, I, I made her panic. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so if you click on one of those, Mm -hmm. It should display in the window for everyone to see. See? Nice. Isn't that cool? That is super that cool. cool. Yeah, it is. I love that. So, yeah, I guess um, for the next few minutes, we can talk about, uh, geek out about my audio and visual setup. I would love um, to. That sounds amazing. So, um, I right now, I have all my audio and video running through what's called an ATEM mini video switcher. And I can switch um, different camera angles. So now we're looking at my desk where I would normally, during on one of my streams, I would pull out my iPad and um, start doing some drawing. That's so I've got, I've got this view. And then for tomorrow night, we've got um, the slides for the... Uh, the presentation. So this is the title slide. And uh, hey, transitions nice. work pretty well. Perfect. And the other thing I can do is I can pop myself up into the corner here. So That's a nice feature. Um, you know, a lot of the online presentations have just the slides, but I, I guess for some people that they it's a nice touch to be able to see the person's face and hand gestures and, and what else, you know, while the I, person's talking. I think it helps. Yeah. Yep. I think so too. So how did I get here? Yes. Yeah. Kind of like the, the narrator of the video. <laughs> you may be wondering how, <laughs> how, how I we arrive at this point in the story. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Exactly. Um, so let me let me try to weave the the story here. Um, to do anything beyond a a USB based webcam, either a web camera that's built into your 
a computer or something like a Logitech video camera, like a mm-hmm. C920 or Brio or or whatever the you know the latest ones that are out there. Uh, if you want to go beyond that and say use a real quotey finger real camera, um, then it it becomes a real slippery slope of of all kinds of <laughs> technology <laughs> that that can happen. Um, so in a nutshell, what I have is a mirrorless, uh, DSLR type camera with a, uh, it's a nice, nice lens on it. And a, I'm using a, a kind of camera that has an HDMI output. Um, not all DSLRs or camcorders have what's called a clean HDMI. So that's the that's the thing that's important when considering something like this. Um, so I on upon I am not an expert on cameras and lenses and you know I'm not a photographer. Nor am I. I don't know all I have all these things. However, I have I know someone who does nice. <laughs> know a lot about this stuff. And so I bought a Lumix uh, made by Panasonic G7 that is capable of doing 4K. Um, I'm not I'm not able to run 4K for um, various reasons, but it's capable of recording in 4K if I nice. ever have the ability to do that. And um, it has a clean HDMI output. So instead of you're seeing what is normally on the screen, like the viewfinder of, of that camera. And, but without all the kind of information around the edges that you might see on a DSLR the heads up camera. display kind of phrase. Yeah. They had the heads up display. So the HDMI comes out of the camera through a, a mini HDMI cable. And then here comes the tricky part. Um, you can't just take that HDMI and plug it straight into your computer. Um, it doesn't work that way. Your, right, because your, your HDMI on your computer is out, right? Yeah, it's an output, not an input. Okay. So in, in order to get that video from the camera into the computer, you got to have uh, what's referred to as a capture card. And that okay. can be uh literally a card that is in your desktop computer if you're running a desktop or it's a USB device um, that you buy that you plug the HDMI into and then you've got a USB connector that you can plug into your computer. And there's several of them out there. Uh, Elgato is one of the most popular. Uh, A lot of gamers use Elgato to capture HDMI output from like Playstations and Xboxes and Switches to be able to stream the output of, from their consoles um, to their computer. Um, What I have is called an ATEM mini and I, hopefully I can pull it into view here. If I switch over to my other view, this is nice. I'm, I'm running out of cable length. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Maybe I, I can I can move the camera a little bit. So this A10 Mini is is not cheap. It's it's about three hundred dollars, but it allows me to have on the back. You can't see it, but there are four HDMI inputs, and I can switch from one input to input two. Input three is my slides, and back. Uh, I can I can turn on the the picture in picture, so um, whatever's on input source one will come through on the picture in picture, and then I can also change the location of that picture in picture hmm. and turn that off. I can also do things like um, there's a cut bus which is lit up. You probably can't see it, but it says cut. You see that? Um, but you can. You can actually tweak the the um, the transitions between your video sources. 
So instead of just cutting from one to another, like cut, cut, mm -hmm. then you can also you can do like a um like a a dissolve. Oh nice. That was a um, transition. And then also up here on each of these things, um, you can specify um, audio. So HDMI includes an audio source uh, on that same signal path, right? right? So I have audio coming from my primary camera, which is okay. a, a whole a whole nother part of the story that we'll get into in a moment. Um, the ATM Mini also has two audio jacks on the back. Okay. So I can, if I had like an external microphone or even like an MP3 player, you know, for some background music or whatever, I could turn those on and off individually uh, up here. And what kind of ports are those? They're the 3.5 millimeter um, stereo inputs, just like a nice. headphone. Jack. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, another thing that you can do uh, is you can load up still images and also switch to a black. Okay. Um, so if I have a still image, I don't have one, so it just goes black. But you can... Through the ATM Mini software, you can put in like um, a you know logo or something that you want to a, a splash show. screen essentially. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And let's see. And this connects to your computer via USB, I imagine. Yep. So I have a USB that that comes out of this thing that's plugged into my computer, and as far as my computer is concerned. Uh, this shows up as black magic. It it looks like a webcam, right? So, to the computer, it it no, it doesn't know the difference. All it knows it's doing is all the processing within the device itself, and then transfers yep. it directly to the computer as a webcam. Yep. So there, this is the ATEM Mini. They make another version of this that's a look that's twice the price called the ATEM Mini Pro. And what the ATM Mini Pro adds is a whole block of uh, buttons over here that is for streaming. So an ATM Mini Pro can stream directly from the device. Um, wow. You, okay. Uh, so you can set up your your uh, uh, YouTube or Facebook or Twitch or whatever. And so without even using a computer at all, you can stream directly, you know, any HDMI source wow. directly to, to a streaming service. And so would that be, does that connect via Cat5 or Wi-Fi? Both. Uh, you okay. can, there's, this has a, a Cat5 cable on the back as well, but you can, oh, you can hook it, you can uh, connect it directly to the network or um, through Wi-Fi. Okay, great. All right, so that is the video switcher. That's the the brains of the operation. And now let's talk about audio. <laughs> so, so I was not content with just... Well, first of all, um, when you have an HDMI source and you have, let's say... Uh, you had something like a Blue Yeti microphone, you know, yep. like the popular microphone for people who, you know, either mount mounted on a boom arm or, mm -hmm. or maybe even a, a Sure, not a Sure. Yeah, Sure makes the SM7B. There, there's there's several models that are popular with podcasters. I've and, definitely heard of the Blue Yeti for sure. Yeah, so so those connect to your computer by USB. And the good thing is there's like zero latency or, or such a small amount of latency on those USB microphones that it's, you know, you, you can't even tell. Right. Um, so the hardware on those things are great. Imperceptible. Imperceptible amounts. Um, the problem is 
the HDMI source from a camera into the ATM ATM Mini, there is some latency, mm. and um, it's usually somewhere around four frames. Not okay. it's not a whole lot. Again, it may be a little bit imperceptible in a mm -hmm. lot of cases, but in some cases, depending on the processing power of the computer, um, the camera itself, um, there's another number of factors that could increase that latency between the camera and the audio that's coming in through, say, an, a USB. Okay. And so um, I was running into that. I was running into the video lagging behind the audio. Okay. Um, that where, could be, cause challenges then. It, it creates that, that disparate, you yeah. know, where you see their mouth move, but it's, it's not signed with the audio. Yep. So I could snap my fingers and you'd hear the snap <laughs> before my fingers would actually, you know, click. Or I could clap my hands and, you know, it wouldn't be in sync. So it was really frustrating. Yeah, that's so frustrating. For, for a while, I was fixing that after the fact. This was before I started streaming. I would just record a tutorial or whatever I was doing for work. And then I would go, I would use um, my video editing software to shift the video or the audio um, a little bit to, to line it up so that it was in sync. Mm -hmm. But when I'm when I wanted to start streaming, I I I was not satisfied with just having that lag. You don't have the option to do that in post, right? Right. So the um the fix uh, is to run your audio through the camera so that your audio is coming with the video across that HDMI. Uh, input source that makes sense and, th and that way you're you're always guaranteed but, well let me to back up there there is one other solution and that is if you're using something like obs obs has a feature built in where you can set a little bit of a delay on an audio source so you can it's in milliseconds you say wow you know maybe maybe it's 300 milliseconds is is how much delay there is between the audio and the video well, you can set that on your video, your audio source, so that you're kind of much closer or, you know, imperceptible difference. Right. Um, for me, um, that wasn't always an option because I, you know, recording other things, I just didn't want to have to deal with it. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the surefire fix is to have your audio going through the camera. Okay. So I have, um, if I were doing one microphone, which most people do, pretty much everyone does, then it would be a little bit easier. You could use something like a Rode uh, Video Go shotgun mic and have it mounted on either on top of the camera pointing at you mm -hmm. or you could mount it on a boom and have it like most shotgun mics. Like I have one right here. That's just right out of frame. And that's okay. what a lot of people do is have a shotgun mic. That's just out of frame pointing straight down at them. That's, that's about a foot away. Right. Mm -hmm. And I could run that through the camera, but me being, a music nerd and, and all this stuff. I, I was not satisfied with a single microphone. So I actually have two microphones. Okay. And, and you might have specs that you might want to get on and play guitar or something at some point. Yeah. So right. if I if I move around and you have on good headphones, you can probably hear oh, yeah. that I'm actually moving around. Mm-hmm. Because it because it's in stereo. Right. Um so I think that's cool. I like that. That is super so, cool. <laughs> but that became a real challenge to get these microphones uh, to go through my camera. So I have a a Focusrite. Um, I don't know if I can pull that into view. Probably not. 
I will see. It's I, I can see a little bit of it there. Stretching. Yeah. So I have this focus right um, input device. This is normally used for recording. You can see the green lighting up when I speak. So I have these two microphones plugged in, and uh, these are the uh, the gain knobs for the uh, the inputs. Mm -hmm. And I have a monitor knob here and a headphone monitoring knob, uh, volumes knob there. Mm -hmm. So my microphones are plugged into here, and this normally is plugged into a uh, show. It you use it as a USB device back to your computer for recording. But in order for me to get from here to my camera, I'm using the monitor output jacks on the back, and I am feeding that signal into the camera. That makes Unfor sense. Unfortunately, <laughs> another snag. <laughs> complications all along the way, right? <laughs> yeah, another snag is that the input jack on a camera is a mic level input and the outputs on this device like this are line level outputs okay so if you if you try to take the lot the line level output of a an audio device like this an audio audio input device and feed that into the camera it's just going to overload the circuits and sound like hot garbage. <laughs> right. <laughs> and um, so what I ended up doing after a lot of trial and error and a lot of, you know, um, failed attempts, I I ended up buying a, um, a direct input box. A, if you're a, a musician and have done any live music, you would know that a direct input box will take like a guitar cable, like a guitar input, which is a line level type signal, okay. and convert that into a mic level um, output that would then go to the soundboard for the PA system. So okay. this this box is sitting in between my Focusrite and... Um, my camera and it's doing it's a stereo input direct box so it's doing the work it's doing two things one is it's changing the impedance of the signal down to where it needs to be and it's also adding a ground lift which is removing uh, background noise that oh. uh, I was also having an issue with gotcha so that's, uh, yeah, that was a lot. That's fascinating. <laughs> but, I, not only did I learn a little bit about streaming, I learned a little bit about audio. Uh, that was, that's super cool. It was, uh, it was not always fun to try to get this to work, but now that it works, I absolutely love it and glad that I was finally able to work out the kinks. And, and now, now I can, I know that I can run, you know, my, my slides mm -hmm. through my ATM mini and that I, I didn't even know I can do that. And, so yeah, I'm, that's pretty sweet. I'm excited about that. Very nice. So yeah, it's kind of, go ahead. I was going to say that it's kind of a, a roundabout way to do it, but I ha the way that I was I accomplished the slides is that I have I'm using the HDMI output of my computer to uh, HDMI source three on the A10 Mini, and it to to uh, the computer it thinks it's another monitor, mm. so it's just you know. Alexa just turned on. I must have I must have said the code word a little too loud. She always likes to interrupt. <laughs> um, 
So I was able to target, uh, use PowerPoint to target that, the, the ATEM Mini as if it were another monitor. Gotcha. Pretty cool. All right. So any other questions? Oh, so many, but I don't want to take advantage of your time. You're already, uh, you've been super generous. Um, yeah, I, I think we've had a few people watching, which is pretty cool. I think we got people excited for, for tomorrow night, which I'm, I'm excited. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, have you given this talk before? Yeah. Uh, I've given this talk as a keynote uh, at several other conferences and is one of the, one of the better talks that I give. So I'm, it's, it's always a pleasure to, uh, to present this one. So I'm looking forward to it. Well, that's high praise considering how good your other talk, all your other talks are. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited about it. And, uh, I think it's going to be really valuable for our meetup and, and for, for anyone that's watching, uh, here's a little teaser for tomorrow. Yes. Two fish are in a tank, and one fish turns to the other and asks. And you'll have to wait until tomorrow night to find out. <laughs> On tinter hooks. All right. Very good. Well, um, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow, David, and uh, I think we'll be having a great time on Zoom and Twitch. So I hope uh, that you all will join us. Have a great night, everybody.